what's going on viewers and subscribers welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video in today's video i'm going to address reinforced concrete slab roof therefore for those of you who have had your timber roof totally blown off due to the passes of hurricane melissa and you are contemplating replacing your timber roof with reinforced concrete roof then this is a video that I want you to pay close attention to. Based on the geographical region that Jamaica found itself in, we are exposed to a lot of sunshine. And the more sunshine that your building gets is the more heat absorption. And that is why it is critically important for those of you who are contemplating replacing your timber roof to know that reinforced concrete roof absorb far more energy, far more heat energy than the average timber roof. And that's a critical piece of information that you need to be privy to. Because if your building is absorbing a lot of heat, you are going to be uncomfortable and then you are going to have to install air conditioning to cool your building down and then that is going to increase your energy costs and hence your electricity bill is going to be significantly more. So heat absorption is critical and you have to know how to mitigate against that. Now, one way you can mitigate against it it won't totally get rid of it, but it will somewhat reduce the amount of heat energy and increase the comfort level inside your house, right? And that is to increase the fluoride of your building. Finished fluoride should be no less than 10 feet high, between nine to 10 feet, right? So that means your existing building, you have to probably run probably two more rows of block along with your belt beam. But more than, more than likely, since you have an existing building, you still have to belt that building to receive the slab. Because remember now, the slab and the beam has to be composite for them both to act as one. So in the case or in the event that there's any seismic action, the slab and the beam behave as one unit and one don't shift and leave the other in, in the event that there are any earthquakes or any ground movement. So that is critical. So your fluoride, you need to have established a fluoride of no more than 10 feet to be comfortable in that building due to heat absorption, to reduce the amount, the amount of heat that you are going to be exposed to. The second way how you can mitigate against your, your, building, your building absorbing a lot of heat, you can reduce the amount of heat absorption by applying a reflective coating on top of your deck roof. So what that does now, it reflects the amount of sunlight the building is receiving and hence reduce the amount of heat absorption. All right? Now I'm going to talk to you about the second drawback of your, of, your, of your reinforced concrete roof slab, and that is leaking. And that can be a problem that is somewhat unsolvable, right? So you have to do your pouring of your concrete to ensure that there are no leakage. Remember, Concrete is very porous. That means water can pass through very easily. So I'm advising you and I'm imploring you that when you're carrying out your pouring of your concrete, you ask the concrete truck to come with a vibrator. What a vibrator does, a, a vibrator reduces the amount of air pockets in the concrete Hence, the concrete will be less porous and, and that will somewhat solve your problem. So, the second way how you can get rid of the, the leakage of your concrete slab is to ensure that there are no depression 
after your finish for your concrete because if the concrete have the pressure what is going to happen when the rain falls water is going to settle in those depression and cause leakage right so that's another way of how you can reduce the problem of leakage and the third and last and most critical that you must ensure that when during the pouring process of your concrete your roof is screened and you and in the middle you can have the workman set set that level to about an inch or two high so that the roof is slow on either side so you can establish your water running off your concrete slab right so you must have a roof slope either side not more than a half inch to an inch fall to ensure that the water from the rain runs off your roof easily without settling on the roof to cause leakage problem and i'm telling you based on experience that when your concrete roof is leaking is a difficult situation to remedy so take these things into consideration when you are thinking or contemplating to replace your timber roof with your reinforced concrete slab roof is that your building is going to absorb more heat and the concrete roof because of the porosity of the concrete the building is going to subject the roof is going to be subjected to leaking and it's a very difficult problem to solve when the concrete starts to leak now i'm going to talk to you about how you should go about retrofitting your existing building to accommodate a reinforced concrete slab but before i get to that i forgot was to mention something in terms of the leakage of your reinforced concrete slab roof another way you can get rid or to mitigate or to reduce the amount of leakage in your reinforced concrete slab is to apply a waterproofing membrane all right so you can apply the waterproofing membrane over the reinforced concrete slab and then on top of the waterproofing membrane you can put your reflective coating to reflect the amount of sunlight that the building is going to be absorbing so i forgot was to mention that so you apply your waterproofing membrane and then you apply your reflective surface over the waterproofing membrane to reduce the amount of heat absorption now i'm going to talk to you about how you should go about retrofitting your existing building to accommodate a reinforced concrete slab now reinforced concrete the unit weight for reinforced concrete is 150 pounds per cubic feet and that's significant so if your existing building was carrying a was carrying a timber roof the foundation is not going to be as stressful as to when you put on that reinforced concrete slab because the reinforced concrete slab is going to be heavier henceforth your substructure that is your foundation is going to experience more loading and that is why i'm saying to you and imploring you that to get an engineer a professional engineer to visit your property and to advise you how to go about retrofitting your existing building to accommodate your reinforced concrete slab it is very critical and I'm, and I'm going to explain to you why now when the engineer visit your property right the engineer should look for cracks now these cracks can be sheer cracks and it can be flexual cracks your shear cracks the cracks that you see in your building that have a 45 degree angle that is your shear cracks the cracks that you see that is vertical that is your cracks due to flexion now shear cracks you usually find shear cracks 
over your windows and your doors, the top portion of your window and your doors. That is where you usually find your shear cracks. And, if, and especially if your building was built a long time ago and there was no lintel that was placed above the windows and doors, you are going to subject your, your building to come under more stress, your walls, are, are going to be more stressed due to the weight of the concrete slab. So the engineer is going to come and look for those shear cracks. Also, the engineer should inspect the building to verify if the corners of your building and your load bearing wall, your load bearing partition wall has reinforced concrete stiffener in them. And if there is no stiffener in them, then the engineer is going to recommend that you cut the, cut the walls, cut those intersections, mark you down to foundation and place in the necessary stiffener that's supposed to be there. Along with that, the engineer has to also prepare an engineer report to take to the municipality to verify that he has done his checks and this building is, is, is worthy to carry a reinforced concrete slab. The Paris Council is going to ask you for an engineer report along with their drawings. This is something that I have done several times already, even for my personal building. So that is why I'm imploring you, do not arbitrarily go about just placing stiffeners all over the place and a professional did not guide you to do that. Another critical piece of information that the engineer is going to inspect this site for, or your existing building for, is your spans. Now, if your spans is in excess of 20 feet, let's say you have a master bedroom or a living room, which is exorbitant, probably 20 by 20 or 20 by 15, the engineer has to do is what? Is deflection calculation to see if the amounts of deflection in the in the new slab that is going to be over those spaces, it is going to be safe. The ACI code limit the deflection to be the, the span divided by 360. I've done two calculations on my channel showing you, demonstrating how to do deflection calculation in your reinforced concrete slab. If you want, you can visit my channel and the videos are there for those of you who want to know a little bit more. So do not go about this in an arbitrary way because remember, we are talking about a hurricane and we are not talking about earthquakes. And Jamaica sits on a very dangerous part line. It is the Henry Quillo Plantain Gardens fault line that runs from the eastern part of the island all the way through the central part of the island to the western part of the island. It actually runs from eastern, east to west throughout the center of Jamaica. So we are prone to get violent and catastrophic earthquake. And, uh, and as I've said in a previous video, we can't mitigate against one natural disaster and then create a hazard for another, another natural disaster. So we have to take all these things into consideration. Another critical investigation that the engineer should should done, should should investigate for or should inspect the buildings for is the amount of one-way or two-way slabs that the spans of the floor is depicting. And the engineer would have to design the slab accordingly, whether it's a one-way slab or a two-way slab. So don't just take it onto yourself and say, yes, I'm going to just take off my timber roof and replace it with reinforced concrete roof without going through these steps, all right? So you need to understand first and foremost that a reinforced concrete roof absorbs far more heat energy than a typical timber roof, all right? 
So you're looking up, you're, you're talking about your energy cost there. Second, you're talking about the susceptibility or leakage of your reinforced concrete slab roof. So you have to mitigate against that by placing the waterproofing membrane, right, and placing a reflective surface on top of your waterproofing membrane to reflect the sunlight so that you, your building does not absorb as much energy. Right, so you need to take these things in consideration. Third, and most critically, employ the services of a professional engineer to do this for you, especially if you have a big building. If you have like a one or a two or a three bedroom, you might get away with it, right? But if you're, and if you have the upper floor, then you probably can get away with it too. Right, because the the um the upper floor is already built, so you, you just have to you know you, there's not much for you can do unless you're gonna you know, dig the corners from the lower floor, come all the way up and put in your stiffness. But I'm talking about like a per a, a, a person with a one story building, a flat building to replace a timber roof with a reinforced concrete roof. So let the professional deal with it. That's in the event when another natural disaster come your building can stand up a little bit better, all right? And as I've said to you on numerous occasions, right, all we can do is try to improve our building. There's no, there's not a 100% certainty that your building is going to be totally resistant towards this natural disaster, all right? Thank you for watching. And if you have watched, if you have watched the video so far, I thank you for that. In my next video, I'm going to talk to you about timber roof and how you can retrofit your building to build a much better timber roof over your building. All right? Take it easy. No respect. And I'll catch you again. Thank you.